Hey TYT, I'm Nomi Konst. We are here in Chicago for the DSA conference and we've been doing a little international traveling within uh, the building because there is an international delegation of other labor movement leaders and activists from around the globe who've been successful. And of course we want to learn from them and what they've been able to accomplish. Uh, we have George Kuzmanovich, who's the foreign policy spokesman for France Insoumise and Jean-Luc Mélenchon from France. Correct. And now you're going to learn what that means. <laughs> so George, thank you so much for joining us on TYT. Thank you for the invitation. Okay, so we, I think um, our audience is familiar with the election in France that recently took place with, um, with Macron. And I think most of us are familiar that he is a neoliberal uh, a leader. How, what are the dynamics like in France right now? Because, you know, my memories of France, having visited France, is there's always a protest, there's always a strike, the labor movement is very strong. Um, how many people have gone to Europe and, and gone to visit France and suddenly, you know, they're, the gar there's a garbage strike or there's a, uh, there's a trans transportation strike and suddenly it messes up their plans. But in the end, it's because you have such a gr strong um, vision for labor and, and value on labor, something that, you know, our country's really been struggling with. How did you elect a neoliberal in France? Well, um, these uh, elections have been very successful uh, for us. Uh, of course, France is a country of revolutions. We, uh, we have a revolution every 60 years, so it's not a surprise when someone uh, from abroad come to France uh, for him to see uh, some struggle and some, some strike. It's uh, usual for us. And there will be more and more with the election of Macron, uh, which means that we will be uh, stronger and stronger. And uh, in, as a matter of fact, we are, uh, our aim is to reach power uh, in 2022. At least we are already now the first opposition group of the new elected president, Mr. Macron, which is very uh, conservative if you look at uh, economy topics. Uh, he is now changing completely the uh, the right for workers uh, he wants to uh, to lower the the wages uh, remove holidays well this is it's it's a war class uh, and uh, we are very confident that uh, we will uh, prevail uh, macron is elected only was elected only three months ago and he's already he also already lost 10 percent in the in the in the pools. Uh, it's just because people are understanding what's happening. The problem is that during the elections, he was strongly supported by the mass media, uh, strongly supported by f the financing companies. Uh, he had the money, and they presented him as a fresh new guy who will. And, and you had Le Pen, Le Pen, who's who's incredibly far far right. So you know it was a similar situation as our country, except <laughs> you you prevented that disaster. <laughs> For a you know less more stable I guess you would say uh, a version of you know the neo neo politics of today. Yes, but the difference is that uh, if you if you think about Trump, uh, Trump was elected um, uh, as a Republican, which is one of the great the two big parties in the in the United States. Uh, Marine Le Pen is from the Front National, uh, which is not a, a, let's say a regular party. Uh, but of course, the, 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 the leading class, the oligarchy, they're using them to, uh, to afraid people and to make them vote for people, like, for guys like uh, Macron. Uh, and during two years, they, they said to, uh, in France that they will be at 30 uh, percent, that they will have 40, 50 deputy at the parliament. But we strike back with France Insoumise. Uh, by the way, we reached the incredible uh, uh, level of uh, half a million supporters uh, in our party that we're a movement that we're organizing. So how, how large is that compared to other parties just for our audience who, who may not? It's the first party, uh, I mean it, we not consider ourselves as party, it's a movement so we uh, include people with different backgrounds yeah and we are less um, less direct fixed directive as a, as a party but still it's let's say uh, grossly socialist yeah. Um, but half a million, it's huge. Even f for France, it's huge. Uh, the biggest party, they reach like 200, 300 uh, supporters. Uh, and us, it's more than uh, half a million. Um, yeah, it's incredible. And what I was saying is that uh, it's a surprise for everybody. Uh, and we fight back for National and we push them back. 
Uh, and right now they have only eight deputies. We have 17. We are the first opposition and they are collapsing. Right now uh, it's ongoing because they have a lot of problems with their own program. Uh, I don't know if Trump is doing that here. I don't think so. But in the Front National is using socialist concept to to yeah to reach the the working class. But as the as the as the Nazis did in the 30s, yeah, where they start to use the the union, some unionists, some people from the ex-socialist parties. And uh, but we show to the people that uh, they're liars. And uh, right now they're like they are collapsing. And our next aim is the is well our first aim is the election in uh, in 2019 is the European elections for uh, um, European congressmen and we are, our target is to be the second uh, party in France so we're going forward and uh, regarding uh, the policy that uh, Mr Macron is uh, is uh, is uh, is implementing in France I'm very confident that they will succeed. Um, in terms of the dynamics of, of France, I've spent some time there, and there's 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 quite a bit of a class system in the country still. You think, you know, European, there's a socialized mentality, you know, everybody loves to live in Europe, it's so comfortable, the food is lovely, <laughs> everyone treats each other with respect. That's sort of the perception that a lot of Americans have. But the reality is, is that there is a, there's an institutional class system, if you are born in a certain rank, you go to certain schools, then you're set on a path very early on in life to be a certain type of, um, you have a career, right? And, and same thing with politicians. Macron was, was born in a certain group of people and, and, was, and was nurtured from a young age by a labor leader, nonetheless, which I found fascinating. I didn't, I didn't realize that his, um, his background was more liberal than, than you'd think, and he turned. Um, for, for the socialist movement, for the labor movement in France today, is it reaching, is it far reaching, is it, is, is it including um, workers of all different types, every single demographic, like what does it look like collectively? Because here, you know, and if, when you look at economic labor movements, it's diverse, but in France there's, everything's so broken into class and, and cultural um, divisions that I'm curious to see what the makeup is. Well, I think is a uh, thing are broken uh, into class everywhere, even here. Uh, even if people don't think so, but as a matter of fact, it is. Well, France was always like kind of socialist country. Uh, if you look at from the United States, uh, because you have the free school, uh, almost free healthcare, uh, and uh, things were, let's say, doing well. Yeah. But uh, since uh, these last 20, 30 years, uh, the oligarchy is uh, winning in Europe and they're removing all the social laws uh, one by one. And as a matter of fact, right now in France, we have 9 million poor people, 9 million, and it's growing uh, on a population of 68 million people. Uh, 6 million are without employment, which is, uh, and which is more than 10% of the working force. And this, these are the official numbers. It's not even the officials are not true. So in, in, in reality, it's 14, 15 percent of the of the working uh, people do not have uh, real jobs. Uh, plus, plus you have all these, uh, uh, how you say that, the poor jobs, uh, part time jobs, uh, not well paid. Uh, in Germany, one quarter of the population is uh, below the level of poverty which sounds strange, I think, for uh, U.S. citizens, but that's the reality. And uh, it shows... It's just immigrants, though? I mean, I'm, I'm just to, to, I'm trying to understand the dynamics. There's so many um, refugees who've come in and immigrants who are not as welcomed in, into the institutions. Um, that I, I'm just curious to see if, if that's the population, because it's, the, it's not the perception you get. Not at all. Not at all. Uh, the, these kind of migrants, uh, the last we have seen after all this war in Libya and Syria, they are not even counted on, on what uh, what I've said to you. Uh, it makes the yeah, it's make the number higher. Well, these people they they are migrants that nobody wants and they live in conditions that that, that looks like hell. It's I um, I was speaking of uh, the usual French uh, citizen or the migrants who is installed in in the country. Uh, there is a class struggle in France, and there is more and more poor people and more and more uh, unemployment. And with all these uh, 
uh, new policy that, that are orient, oriented toward business, there will be one more. That's why, uh, unfortunately, if I may say, we're confident that, that, that uh, we will uh, be stronger and stronger and uh, maybe seize power um, in the near future because things uh, has to change there. Um, is the membership to your movement, is it, is it younger as it is here in the United States? Yeah, we have a lot of young people. Uh, that's, uh, you have to know that uh, Mr. Mélenchon uh, was first uh, as a presidential candidate among uh, working class and young people below 30 years old. So we have a lot of young people like, like here and that's, uh, that's uh, also something that is very, that, that gives us confidence for the future. Um. The last question I have for you is, is you know, you're looking at the Democratic Socialists here at, at the DSA and, and watching this organization build up to 27,000 members when it you know, barely had any members a year ago today. Um, there's a lot of organiza organizing here and, and there are chapters from all over the country, but you know, um, to become a national party or as we would call a party, um, whether it works internally within the Democratic Party as like the WFP does or has its own line um, or all of the above, what do they need to do in the next year that can speed up that track? Because we have elections in 2018. First of all, uh, we are very happy of what is happening here in the United States uh, with DSA, but also with other movement, other parties, uh, with, uh, with the Bernie Sanders campaign, because things are moving. And we were, many of us, we were believing in Europe that uh, it's finished with the uh, uh, social struggle in the, in the United States, or it's not. Uh, okay, Trump's uh, has won the election, but uh, uh, we see organizations like DSA becoming stronger and stronger. And our advice uh, would be because you're, they are still far from from power, uh, but it, that they are larger, more and more people. Our advice would be to to go to see people from the working class, the young people, to organize what we call uh, popular universities, just to explain people how works the system. Um, it's a bit like the, like the uh, myth of the uh, plateau caves. They, they have to bring light to people who don't have light or they have too much light of, of uh, television, of the uh, mass medias and doesn't know exactly how things work and what's happening and how they're robbed and how things could be better. So, uh, and that's how we, f we fought against uh, Front National. We went to uh, areas uh, were they supposed to be the strongest and we just spoke with the people organized uh, meeting and participate at the maximum of struggle there they were in so yeah do that and you will be stronger and stronger okay I lied I have one more question out of out of out of left field but you mentioned Trump um, the, the, the topic of Russia has become very controversial on the left um, my perspective is you know, where there's smoke, there's fire, and there's a lot of smoke right now with Russia's relationship, Putin's relationship in, in particular, and the oligarchs with Trump goes back, you know, 30, 35 years. Um, and anybody, like I'm a New York reporter, anybody who's covered New York is very aware of, of uh, Donald Trump's relationship with the oligarchs. Uh, there, was, there was word that Marine Le Pen um, had a relationship with Putin as well. Is, is this nationalist, from your perspective in France, does it seem like this nationalist... Um, movement is really being pushed by the the oligarchs and and perhaps russia no we we consider that uh, more or less it's propaganda uh, of course Marine le pen went there and uh, she received money from uh, oligarchs and um, she got some support from uh, from kremlin it's hard to believe that uh, russia has the power to elect someone in the largest and strongest country in the world which are the United States but of course they have links and they have also links with the Clintons because the Clintons also receive money we think that this is purely simply uh, as it was analyzed uh, since 200 century it's oligarchy They're, they have interests that are common and their interests that are common is that the oligarchy gets richer richer here uh, richer in Russia so they will do whatever it takes to maintain the oligarchy on power, but uh, I don't think 
that's, uh, that Trump was elected because he received the, the support of, of, of Russia, it will be too easy. And uh, we had a very weak party. So, you know, when you have a weak state and the institutions are weak, it's, it's prime for opportunities like this, especially in a 13 way primary. Exactly. And I would like to remind something is that there is a two cover of Time magazine. Uh, one of last year with Putin, who is yeah. like Putin. Uh, Put the, the, yeah. the bad guy, how he dare uh, interfere in the uh, in our elections, blah blah blah. And you have a, a Time uh, magazine cover from uh, 96, 96, yeah, uh, saying how our uh, people helped to re-elect Yeltsin in 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 Russia. So. For us, that we are not, we are not American, it's always a little bit funny when the, the, the United, in the United States people are not happy of involvement of no other countries when the United States are, in, are involved in so many elections all across the world. Um, and at least it should be a lesson for the uh, oligarchy here. Stop messing with the other uh, countries, stop messing with the other elections because it's not good at the end because they have to have I remind them here that uh, it's Yeltsin that they pushed uh, while he was completely hated by the po his population in Russia that chose uh, Putin in 99. So you wouldn't have had Putin if it weren't for Yeltsin. Yeah, that's it. So fascinating. Yeah, that's, that's so stop it. <laughs> well, we're going to be uh, continuing to, to follow what's happening globally. I, I greatly appreciate you coming on TYT. Thank you. Thank you very Enjoy much. your time in America. <laughs> I will. I will. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Bye.